It has been several months since the COVID-19 booster doses have been available and tens of millions of people have already taken these booster doses in the United States. So the question is, what is the latest update on the safety of these COVID-19 vaccines? Especially, what are we learning about the risk of myocarditis? What is the new data telling us about the overall risk of myocarditis? Hello everyone, I'm Naveen Agarwal and welcome to my weekly video update. In this video, I will share with you the latest data that just got out from the CDC, in which they have looked at um, a lot of data from the booster doses and what people have reported back to the CDC and FDA, uh, the kind of adverse events that uh, they have experienced. And based on that, they are publishing a summary of this data. So I will talk about it, but share in the comments below if you have taken a booster dose or not, and what are your current questions and concerns related to the safety of these COVID-19 vaccines. And I'll be happy to look into them in future. So this data comes from a recent report from the CDC, uh, where they looked at data from two different sources. The first one is vSafe, which is a voluntary safety reporting program. I signed up for it and I actually had a video about this uh, vSafe program. And the second source is the VAERS, the Vaccine Adverse Events Reporting System database, which is a passive surveillance monitoring system where all kind of adverse events from the vaccines are reported, not just COVID-19 vaccines, but all different vaccines. So these are the two sources of data they looked at. Uh, quite a lot of data that they have looked at and based on that, they are uh, reporting a summary. So let's look into that. Uh, first, let's uh, do a quick refresher on myocarditis because this is going to be the main focus in this video. Myocarditis, uh, according to this very nice summary from NIH, is one of the inflammation of the heart muscle. Now, there are three different types of inflammations known in the heart, endocarditis, myocarditis, and pericarditis. Myocarditis seems to be of more interest because that's what people are finding uh, that uh, after mRNA vaccines, that is what is happening right now. Now, myocarditis, according to this brief, is the inflammation of the heart muscle itself. And it can happen as a result of any infection. But curiously, it is happening after receiving mRNA vaccines, especially among young males. So this has been a concern, an ongoing concern, and a lot of work is going on, and we are monitoring this very closely. So this data gives us a little bit more information and helps us to put a number around the risk. And keep in mind, it's changing. So that number may change. So here is, the, here is the latest data. This comes from the CDC MMWR report from February 2022, and I'll give you a link to this report as part of this video. They looked at data from September 22nd, 2021 to February 6, 2022. So a fair amount of time has passed since the booster doses have been available. 83 million people have received a booster dose 18 years and over in the United States. They analyzed data from vSafe and the VAERS system 90% of the reported events were non-serious, 90%. So they received about close to 40,000 reports in the VAERS system. And out of that, more than 90% were non-serious. Remaining were serious that required hospitalization and care. 37 reports of myocarditis in this time frame and in this data. Most people received the same mRNA booster as their primary series. This is what they reported from the vSafe system. Close to 700,000 people reported. About most of them, more than 80% of them, and I was one of those, uh, I took the same Moderna booster as my primary series. So it's not su surprising that most people uh, did the same primary series booster. Local and systemic reactions, less frequent after booster compared to the second dose. Now this is a key finding. And again, it's voluntary reporting, so there are some limitations to this reporting. But in general, most people reported systemic issues like fever or fatigue or local reactions like pain or uh, maybe slight uh, inflammation in that area, slight irritation, burning sensation in, at the site of injection. But in general, it was less frequent compared to what they experienced after the second dose. So the booster by itself was not more risky 
than the second dose. Now let's talk about myocarditis. 11 of the 37 myocarditis events were in males 18 to 24 years old. So we know that the risk is higher for young males. However, it can happen in older people too. As an example, five were in people 65 years and old. Five. So it can happen to anybody. It seems to be happening more frequently at a higher level among young males. Now the rates were higher for Moderna booster dose and they calculated a number about 8.7 per million booster dose is the risk for myocarditis in this age range 18 to 24 years old males but it was lower than after the second dose which they estimated at about 56 so the bottom line is yes the risk is there is higher for the moderna mrna vaccine but the booster is not giving you a higher risk of myocarditis so if you have a young person in your family and they receive the second dose they did not have myocarditis hopefully getting the booster is not going to be at the same risk level than the second dose so their chances of getting myocarditis for the booster dose are even lower so in summary really there aren't too many surprises in this data set it is very consistent with what people have seen in the original clinical trials and continue to monitor this most of the times people are reporting local or systemic issues which go away very quickly in some cases they have to take medical care and go to the hospital risk of myocarditis is better understood now it's higher for the moderna mrna vaccine but the risk for the booster dose is lower than the second dose much lower it is definitely very relevant for young males 18 to 24 year olds so if that's the person you have in mind in your family this number would be important to you i hope this is useful let me know your thoughts questions and comments and i'll continue to keep an eye on this type of data as it comes out over time i'm sure we will learn a lot more in the coming future a lot of people are working in this area especially around the risk of myocarditis but let me know what's on your mind thank you again i look forward to hearing from you and please stay safe